Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grimswin Knives Week in Review. I'm John. Angelo. And this is the shot where we get to just converse and have a conversation with each other, yep. with you guys, about what's been going on the past week and what we're looking forward to for the future. Um, you might notice it's loud in here. We're a working shop. Everybody's busy. A lot of the machines are running right now. So sorry, not sorry. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what this it is. This is the time we have. Yeah. Even finding this time is kind of hard. There's exactly. always something going on. All right, so right. what do you got? So yeah, our week was pretty busy. As you guys watched the last video, we um, we had a, an event with one of the drills. Um, this happens now and then. It's not uh, it's not very common that you break stuff, but it does happen. All the uh, DMs and text messages I got from people that are like, uh, it happens. Yeah, it break, happens. Breaking a glass, yeah. it's, it's, it's not unfortunate. Some, yeah, it's not something you really want to do is yeah. break the glass, but tools do break, things, things do happen. Yeah. It's part of manufacturing. Anybody out there who has experience has probably experienced if you've machined, you've broken tools. If you haven't broken tools, you've never machined. Yeah, exactly. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, or you're in your first week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, happens. yeah. So we installed a new window. Um, you know, Jeff and I did that. Um, he was super helpful. Did a lot of, um, you know, figuring out how to get it in there. Um, so we dialed in a new drill. We got it back up and running. We're uh, testing a new drill from Zadaro for the uh, non-ferrous materials. Mm, Ceratizit. Sorry, Ceratizit. Right. Ceratizit, uh, which Matt hooked us up with from DeBoer. Yep. Um, DeBoer tools, we use a lot of their tools here. Uh, they're great, super you know, high quality tools. Canadian made? Yep, Canadian made. But um, yeah, this Ceratizit drill, you said it's DLC coated, yep. meant for uh, non-ferrous like non -ferrous brass, materials. bronze. Yep. It's designed to essentially evacuate those chips out fast to avoid packing of those materials. Yeah, cool. It's got a totally different um, geometry to it. It's very fast. Drilling, I would say. That's true. Yeah, the, the angle of it. Yeah, the different. helix was super yeah. different. So we're going to try that out. Um, we've got the geo cool in here. We saw some comments and some. I believe you got some questions on that, like from uh, yeah. from people. Yeah, the, the Qualicam Geo Cool <laughs> eight ninety. Eight ninety. Um, it's new to us. Not a lot of people running it. I think we're the first people in Canada. First people to be in Canada it. to try it. So um, you know, a lot of you guys are looking it up. They're like, I can't find any information online. Well, I think it's new. I think yeah, it's, it's pretty like, new. We're testing it out for Qualicam. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how it is. Yeah, so we got it in here. Yeah, what's your um, first impression? It's good. Like a lot of the operations we do, like the uh, the nozzles aren't programmable, so they're kind of in a fixed position. So yeah. some of the operations we do with certain tools, you're kind of sacrificing here and there, and we're getting a bit of aeration on some tools. So okay. we had some foaming issues. Yeah, that's true. The, the foam would like come up and over and sometimes yep. leak over the floor, and it's a yep. real big and, problem. And um, we, you know, through various vendors, you know, people's help, et cetera, we really dug into this. Was it water? Is it, you know, what is it? And a lot of it comes from aeration in the tools themselves and okay. not enough uh, space for it to dissipate and the speed it goes through. So this is a, a coolant that is designed to reduce foaming in all water conditions. Yeah, uh, super crew, low foam. Yep, yep. Increase the lubricity, um, less chances of, uh, it's supposed to reject some of the tamping oils a little bit better. Okay. So And they said it was like four nickel titanium yes. and good and everything else. Yeah, exactly. So it should be really good for us. Yep. So, uh, We'll and feed back on that. I think they they suggested this coolant for us specifically because it's a low foaming coolant, and we have had issues with that yep. in many machines. Yep. But we'll see. We'll see how it works. Uh, exactly. Actual first impression: it smells strongly. Mm -hmm. It smells like um, latex paint, like you just painted your house yep. kind of thing. Yeah, it was. And it, yep. It's been almost a week now. It smells a lot less. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, Qualicam told me the same thing. It will dissipate over time, but two to th two to five days. Yeah, they said roughly. But so. these are the things you guys, as customers. We're trying to share what what actually happens. Yeah, in our experiences. You know? It's like there's weird stuff that goes on. Why does it smell like paint in here? Yeah. We put one coolant or an oil in the machine. We thought the mach the shop was on fire because of the smell, right? Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. And it was just no, that was just the new oil. That's what it smells like for a while until it dissipates. Super yeah. weird. So I want to back up a little bit to the Nakamura because yes. I got some uh, some good footage of okay. you and Jeff testing this drill. Yeah. So you, you spend like almost a week replacing the glass, setting up the drill. Jeff worked really hard to dial in the yes. drill for uh, alignment, so alignment, it's like, exactly. like straight and yep. you know dead center, right? Yeah, these drills require quite a bit of um, accuracy in their alignment. If you're spinning the drill, you can get away with a little bit more. Although like on a milling might... machine, it's spilling, yeah. spinning the drill, but on the lathe, the drill is fixed and the workpiece is spinning. Yes. So if that's out, you're going to essentially load up one of your flutes or one of the cutting edges. And, and you don't want to drill you know, no. kind of crooked because no. then it could break. Exactly. So because of an event, we always go and check the machine. Right. If anything happens, if there's any you know breakage or anything, the first thing you want to do is 
did something happen to yeah. the work holding? Is everything still square? Basically? Tool holding, etc. So yeah, we checked it and we found a bit of misalignment in the in the um, yeah, yeah. one of the holders. So we set we set it up for alignment. We had to wait for some drills to get in. Uh, but we got those in and yesterday we drilled them obviously a little bit of a uh, <laughs> what was that like explain it to me well I, I did a program that part three years ago yeah and it was I felt less stressed doing it then it was easy um, <laughs> and then you know you get that sort of fear gun shy a little bit um, so yeah, yeah. you got to walk back and you know get those nerves <laughs> back and send take it. the deep breath yeah. and you're just like ah. totally fine you know our program's right everything's right it was just like we said it was a, a lack of through coolant makes all the difference. You're yeah. using that coolant to flush out those chips and you got a long drill. This is a 12D drill. Um, if you aren't moving those chips through fast enough, you're going to break break that drill. So uh, we found the issue pretty much immediately, yeah. uh, resolved it, fixed it, and we're back in action. Unfortunately, it's a, yeah, it just works. It's a very expensive drill. Yeah, yeah. We lose some time and expensive glass, but like you said, it happens. We learn That's from cool. it, we move forward. Yeah, exactly, so, so it was good, it was good. So the starburst pattern, um, last week I talked about using the eight fluid end mill to significantly reduce our cycle yep. times. Um, and I did that for the starburst pattern and then made a bunch of handles. And then once the finishing guys got them, they said the, the um, angles of mm -hmm. the starburst clip don't line up with the handle, like something changed. And I was like, uh, no, it didn't. They're like, well, it did, let me show you. So like, I think on the handles, it's a 0 0.9 degree spacing. Yep. So there's more than 360 lines like just more um, from the pivot as the center point and the handle the new handle had more lines than it should have even though the degrees was like one degree or something yeah and it turns out before if this was my clip and my tool was was totally perpendicular so everything worked but then i changed it recently to go 45 degrees yeah. and now so, i'm cutting like this so explain to people why you do that why so, you would angle that on a 45. 45 degree because a ball end mill really sucks to cut on the very yeah. tip. It yeah. works, it works fine. It, like, it you just can. leaves a crappy finish. And it's not something you really want to do if you're really trying yeah. to get a finish. So if you can, instead of go like this, if you can tilt it, now you're scooping with the sides of the end yep. mill and it just, the finish went way up. So what happened was when I tilted the workpiece, but the center point um, moved with it, the kind of the trigonometry of that center point changed. Yep. So it was like a shorter distance for each arc. So that's, it took me a long time, hours to figure this out led to uh, a tighter step over. Yep. So instead of 0 0.9, my answer had to be like 1.437 degrees. So you had to, to I, force that exactly, in order to get where you needed. And I would infuse and I could compare the old tool path to the new yeah. tool path, overlay them until they looked right. And that was like a, you know, late at night at home kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> get Sometimes, your sleep. Yeah, because it's, so it, it's automatically populating those, uh, those paths. Yeah. Okay. yeah, exactly. So I figured that out, really happy with that. Um, and I, I knew going faster, there's always a downside, whether surface finish or something goes weird, yeah. right? And this was uh, pretty much the only one that had to be changed. So now starbursts are super Mint. good. Yeah. Super good. Um, awesome. Yeah. What you got? So yeah, new product updates. Um, we're moving Damasteel through a little bit. So we Excellent. should have some uh, Damasteel coming through. We, You've been digging into Acid Etch a lot. Yeah, so my latest hyper obsession absolute deep dive this past five days has been on chemistry. Now chemistry, I never took chemistry class in high school, took physics. Um, I've always kind of avoided chemistry. Like we come across it a lot. It's in our, everything it, we do. But, but I've never like gone deep. Yeah. Because I need a reason to really dive into yeah. a topic. And now with etching damn steel, and I see our current process. Um, it works, but it's not, it, it, it could works. be improved. It could be so much improved. It's so, very um, knife maker -esque. Yeah, exactly. It's very entry level. It's the same thing we did back in the garage 10 years ago. Um, we can do better. Yep. And I started to realize like the production facility we have here, we're not like backyardigans anymore. Nope. We're, we, how do we do this right? What is, the, what is the scientific chemical way to etch a blade and to deal with the acid? Um, you know, we're using baking soda to neutralize it. Turns out sodium hydroxide is the answer. Yeah. Works way better, way faster, doesn't even fizz. If you have equal part of um, hydrochloric and equal part of sodium hydroxide and you go like this, they just neutralize. You get water, oh. water and salt. Interesting. So the, chemically, yeah. I learned all of this and it's super fun. Awesome. Also, we've been using mason jars to hold the acid. You know, you think glass jars, great. They're made of soda lime glass, which is not good for acid. You need borosilicate glass, which are what beakers are made of. So I'm like, okay, where do I buy labware? I need yeah. like like beakers and Bunsen burners and stuff, right? So I bought a bunch of beakers. Um, they're a lot stronger. They will hold the acid just great. 
they're so strong you can like put them on a stove, on yeah. a hot plate, over a flame. Throw them in like, the oven. Super cool. So, so many other things. I could dive into it for a long time. Um, but it all accumulates to better, more damage steel. Better, yeah, easier for us, easier process. Because yeah. when the process is messy and gross and scary and time consuming and variable, yeah. we don't want to do it. Yeah. So us in manufacturing here, making more blades, we need finishing guys to be able to keep up with that as well. Yes, exactly. It's kind of the whole goal. And with new knife coming out, um, I mean, if I were to open up custom orders for this and I offer damn steel, I think 80% of people yeah. would choose damn steel, guaranteed. right? Almost yeah. So <laughs> I'm keeping that in mind coming up. Um, damn steel is coming. We love damn steel, great, great company, yeah. super quality steel. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of extra work. So yes, I'm trying to make that easier, you know, for us. With the less lower scrap rate and just yeah, just better. Yep. Speaking of blades, what you got here? Magna cut. So yeah, we've got magna cut slowly flowing through the shop. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be kind of trickling them out. Yep. Um, you know, validating the heat treat finally, and um, yeah, we're we're gonna have some on the grinder next week. And uh, so you surface just, grind them first, and then they go through the milling yep, machines, exactly. and then heat treat. We do our own heat treat, and then we lap them, and then we hard hard mill them. Yeah, and then we mill the bevels, and then yeah. they go to like the blade is the most complicated thing that we make. Um, we'll get to it later, but a lot of people have asked about different blade steels. And yeah, stuff, we'll get into that. It's such a process for us that it's not something we can just be like, yeah. No, we don't. Uh, like, we're not just experimenting with everything. We want to make sure that like these pro like the knife has to perform. It has to be a if it leaves the shop, it has to have that Grimsmo guarantee for performance, and yeah. that means we can't just jump around to whatever is popular yeah. or new. Um, we have to try it. We have to prove it. We have to, you know, validate, validate it, it and, and make sure it makes sense. And the, the steel itself has to make sense for the product. Yeah. So some of the knives are like a rask is a lot more slicey. It's, you know, it could stand to use a, you more know, you could, steel yeah, you could go a harder steel with that. Um, that's going to be a little bit more brittle. And with something like the Norseman, you want people to use it. It's a it's a knife that you can use with gloves on in the winter, chopping you know branches. Yeah, yeah. It's pulling want, staples out of the the targets of the range. Exactly. Kind of yep. I've done that a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, that needs to be strong. That that blade is designed to be a user. Yeah. So that steel has to be tough and a very well balanced steel. So we'll play with some of the balanced steels and we'll we'll utilize some of the the really hard steels in the future, especially for items like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So um, like. The challenges that we've seen with it, there's a few, you know, it machines slightly differently. We're running it uh, about 63 RC. Okay. 62 to 63. We're going to follow Laren's recommendations on this because as you get into the higher ranges of hardness, you really see a massive drop off in your impact toughness. And you can look at the chart P values on this and it, it validates that statement. Um, anybody in materials engineering knows this. You pick the steel to sit in that right, correct range. Right. If you make it too hard, you're losing a lot of toughness. Like yeah. when you look at that range, it drops off considerably fast. So if you start to just do something because you can, why? You should do it right. Um, the manufacturer is recommending something. It's recommended for that purpose in that range to get the, the best balance of toughness and wear resistance. And that's okay. what we need. So it's harder than what we normally do, which we're about 61 RC on our, uh, our RWL, which is it's sort of its peak in toughness. Sweet spot, yeah. Yeah, it's a sweet spot. And um, and this will allow us to go a little bit harder. We do see some of the tolerances change in machining. So it will wear tools out a little bit quicker. Yeah, especially when we hard mill the Magna Cuts exactly. and we, then you CMM them on our Duramax. Yeah, every blade, every uh, every Norseman blade gets CMM'd uh, for a bunch of different uh, yeah, GDT various, features. Geometry and, yeah, and geometry. things like that. We track it, that helps us check tool life, it helps us predict things, it helps us see what we're doing wrong. Yep. It, help, it's hel it helps a lot. So every blade is CMM'd and we're able to see that change and it's, it's you see it instantly. Like the magna cuts are measuring a magnitude different, not a yes. magnitude, but yeah, a, a bit different. So I see a them, range different. Everything is slight, every cut surface is slightly smaller. Really? It cuts a little bit less. So we'll hard milling it. With hard milling. So yeah. we'll need to adjust that. Soft milling, no problem. Okay. Um, but once it gets hard, you know, that, that RC difference and the, and the wear resistance difference will, you know. It's interesting. Yeah, but we, we track that, we can predict it, and then so we'll... So from a customer's perspective, is that a good thing? Is that, does that a harder steel? Is it better? I don't know. It depends what you want. Like a... I'm not a metal... I don't really know steels yeah, that well. So, so, like, so like going into the 60s is pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and even the RWL we use is considered a pretty hard steel, although you can get, you know, there's some incredibly hard steels out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's that balance of what do you want? Do you need, you want a bit of durability, right? You want your okay. durability and toughness. So your impact toughness can, it's not gonna chip out on you. It's not gonna break. 
and then you want the wear resistance so that it can hold up to the abrasive use of that edge. Yeah, the edge doesn't doesn't blunt. Doesn't blunt out, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're trying to find that balance of not blunting out the edge okay. and not chipping out the edge. And steel's like... Every steel's going to have a different... Rate. Exactly. Yeah. And and uh, RWL 34 CPM 154 has been in that sweet spot for a long time. And now Magnacut is showing that you know, it might be the new kid in town to find that sweet spot where you're a little bit harder. At a harder range. At yeah. a harder range and still being pretty sense. serviceable. Because we want people to be able to sharpen these and use them and not have to send them back. Yep. For sharpening, we want you guys to be able to use these knives yep. and maintain them. That's why they come with a kit. There's uh, there's tools to take it apart, disassemble it. You designed that from the beginning. It was exactly. a part of your your uh, almost your ethos was like you guys need to be able to to serve. They maintain this your, is your knife. Your take it apart. Tool yep. exactly. And uh, yep. there's a lot of pride in that and being able to take it apart and put it back together the same. Yeah, um, I, I could go deep onto that. You know, there's a lot should. of knives out there, especially lower cost knives. Yep. That you got to put it together. You got to twist it this way. Then you got to tighten it down yeah. for it to work right. Ours, nope. Every time they go together, that's where tolerances come in. Exactly. Consistency. And I think you know most of the collectors out there probably experienced that. Yeah. So. And I get it. It's hard. Like, it's hard. But we've put a lot of effort into that. Yes. So it's um, yeah, it's exciting. We'll always you know explore different things. Yeah. Um, we'll get into some of the customer feedback later and uh, talk Sounds about the good. future. Yeah, so um, as we talked about last week, we sent some testing out to DLC for yeah. for coating to see what the different finishes would achieve. And I mean, this pen looks incredible, oh, look doesn't it? Looks amazing. We'll um, get some, Ryan, we'll get some close-ups of yeah, this. Yeah, we'll get some close-ups of this later. Um, so explain this to me in full detail. What am I looking at So here? normally we tumble our product. Uh, it gives you that sort okay. of wabasabi um, element of, you know, randomness. Yeah, and yeah. it helps, you know, helps it in long-term use, hide scratches. You know, and it's something that, you know, we take a lot of pride in one of the finishes. It's kind of that theory of if you try to polish it and there's one scratch, that's a big problem. But we throw it in the tumbler and there's a million scratches. Exactly. So it, it averages them out. Exactly. And as you use that over time. Yeah, you add one it, more scratch, you can't it, really You tell. barely notice it. Yeah, it, yeah. it ages really nice. They almost age gracefully it's, when yeah. you add that tumble in there. Um, because we're doing coatings on this, that will kind of protect it a little bit. So we so could play with a few. You, you could do a bright polish. We can and try a polish. DLC coat it and the, the hardness of the coating might protect. It should protect it, it more. Should, should exactly. Yeah, so exactly. we're experimenting with satins. It looks incredible. Sunny. We get a darker finish on it, uh, just the way it plays with light. Yeah. So we probably do a few of these. It does take a bit more of our time to, yeah. to, to finish them. You so know, with the, satin, you're basically using sandpaper to brush it. Exactly. A certain grid sandpaper, certain yeah. pressure, all that certain stuff. Certain pressure, a certain way that we're passing it over in order to create sort of like a nice crosshatch line as it yeah. goes through there. Um, Very controlled scratch. Exactly. So we'll look under magnification and, and check how it is. So each person, it's, it's a manually done process. Yeah. So to develop that skill, we feed back into okay. the microscope to see what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? And you develop that hand skill from that, you know, so that way there's that, you know, hand brush element is, is beautiful. Yeah. So I think this is something we will do some of in, in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah so, we, we did what? One satin pen? Yep. Which you quickly borrowed yes. for testing. Testing. Yes. Um, um, that's fine. And then we did a whole bunch of uh, tumbled DLC, which yep. also looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, like, what, 50 pence, 100 pence, something we like that? We did about 50 pence. Yeah, it was yep. good. It's yep. a good, good uh, batch. It was nice. Yeah. So we'll definitely offer a few different finishes. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys like them. Real quick, somebody was asking about the our caramel coating, if it's durable, because he's got some anodized sagas that do scratch up and uh, yeah. you want to talk about that briefly? Yeah, so that's a multi-layer coating. That's a, that's considered one of the more durable coatings. Those coatings are, because we're using titanium as a substrate, you're actually bonding really well to that material. Okay. Whereas DLC is sort of like a coating on top of this. It's not, it's bonding into some degree, but it's not a, I don't believe it's a molecular bond in the same way. All right, you're still getting an atomic bond, but not like the same way. Because with titanium coatings, like a titanium aluminum nitride exactly. coating? Yep, or okay. titanium silicone vanadium nitride, which I believe is what that is. Okay. Um, you're bonding a little bit better, so it's gonna get a bit of better adhesion. So, so not only the hardness outside of the coating itself, but the adhesion to the adhesion is great. Yep, so it's not as hard as DLC. DLC is pretty much at the upper echelon of hardness, but the adhesion on this and, and the durability is, is not as great as the, the coatings that are okay. more bonded and are more durable. So, so basically, both of them are going to be amazing. They're amazing coatings. These and are sci-fi coatings. Yes, these are extremely advanced yeah. uh, coatings for industry and oh, okay. um, whether they be automotive, aerospace, um, cutting tools, cutting, et cetera, cutting yeah. tools, especially uh, all, almost. We have cutting tools in here from various yeah. companies that use our vendors. 
like, like think about this, if, even if you don't know machining, like a machine uses a cutting tool, like a drill bit or an end mill that is very sharp and yep. is coated with these exact same coatings exactly. that is meant to destroy and shame titanium in canal, steel, yep. stainless, aluminum all day long until it wears out eventually. Exactly. And those coatings, imagine how much load and effort and heat goes yep. into those end mills. And we're putting that on our pen. On our like, pens. It's yep. going to hold up pretty good. Yeah, and we're choosing the higher, the highest performing coatings we can we can find. And we've, yep. like you said, we've we've, we've looked around a lot. We've experimented a lot. Um, we've been through probably six different coating vendors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're we're doing good now. Yeah. So good. we're happy with them. We're obviously always try to improve. Always try to make things cooler. Yep. Um, one one topic on the um, the caramel coating, um, the feel. It's That's a little sure, different. Yeah. It's got like a almost like there's. The way it's being applied, there's almost like little nodes, not nodules yeah. of material, very microscopic. So that's where you get that texture from. You kind of feel silky, but yes. like yep. not slippery. It's a little stickier. Exactly. It's the way the coating is being applied and out there. And you said the customers are are enjoying the extra grip. Like yep. this is a uh, nickel aluminum bronze and titanium pen. It's a shop pen, uh, totally brushed, satin finish, no tumbling or anything. And it's like, it's, yeah. it's pretty slippery. This too feels nice and slick if that's what you want. And then the other right. ones have that nice grip. Yeah, the caramel has like, it's satin, it's neat. would you just call it? A satin finish yeah. almost. Yep. Um, those coatings are developed because specifically for uh, machining titanium, okay. for adding a bit of toughness and uh, lubrication to the, because as the, you're forming a chip, that yeah. chip has to go somewhere. Exactly. So you want to coat the tool. Exactly. Yeah. So they're using these. So titanium is an extremely galling, almost abrasive material when you machine it. Yeah. Um, anybody who's machined it understands this. So it's really hard on tools. So this was a coating developed specifically for machining titanium. I love it. So we put it in our titanium pens yes. and, and send it. Full circle, baby. Yeah. So it's exciting. And that satin looks... It's eye-catching. Yeah, very eye-catching. We'll definitely do some of these. Because they're hand-done, yeah. we will... You know, yes, yeah, a bit more limited, in. more rare. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think you guys want that. You want the the stuff somebody nobody else can have, right? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. So then there's that. Um, so as we talked about last week with the minis, trying to figure out you know specifically how to sell them. Um, we'll get to that later. But the foam packaging that we include with every knife, every nook case that we had custom designed, custom made. Um, the foam we've gone through many different iterations. We've got previous videos on this of us milling it ourselves, of us having a local company make them for us. Mm -hmm. And um, we just got a batch back of Rask foams that look amazing. The, the place that milled Op 1 did such a good job. Yep. They actually water jet the outside profile from long sheets, which is kind of one of our most annoying parts of it. Yep. So it was really cool how they did it. They have a big sheet, they mill all the pockets out, and then they put on their water jet, and they water jet all the profiles. And then we bring it here for op two and maybe even op three. And this is in where are these guys located? They're in uh, north of Toronto somewhere. Yeah, so it's it, pretty close to us. What's funny is it's called Norseman Foam Company. Yep. Which at first I was like, sweet, we make a Norseman, Norseman Foam Company. Guys, it is so confusing when I say Norseman Foam now in our company. Yeah. Because I'm like, am I talking about our knife, Norseman Foam, or is the ones made by Norseman Foam Company? And how do I, <laughs> it's, it's kind of annoying, <laughs> but. They do a really good yeah, job. Yeah, great job. And they actually laminate the foam together for us. Yep. Awesome. So yeah, so we're going to be producing some kits, I guess, for these to do a, to do a yep. uh, combo kit. Like we've we, always wanted to do knife pen combo kit in the foam. And there's challenges with that. And just yep. time and effort and, and, you know, people time, machine time, things like that. But it's, it's definitely on the horizon, something we exactly. want to do. So yeah, whether it's knife knife or pen pen or big mini yep. or the Maximus, the Minimus and the Sagamus. The Maximus. <laughs> Um, yeah, so to do that, I think we'll, we're going to utilize Grayson. Um, we've been yeah. training Grayson up. You guys will start to see some of these employees a little bit more over the course of these videos. Um, we'll probably bring them in to chat with them and you yeah. know the, what they're experiencing, their challenges, their, what they see as opportunities. Yep. Everybody's um, got a great skill set and great personalities. And as we can try to you know, work them into these videos, maybe somehow. Yeah, so yeah, we'll use, we'll use that opportunity to train Grayson up to get him used to fusion, a bit of programming. Um, when I, when I started, we used to machine all the foam in here. Yeah. And that was, that was something else. Yeah, we um, machined the foam here and then in the Umax. In the Umax, And then yeah. in the Speedio and now in our router. Yes, the router is like, great for it. It's the um, product that's jumped around the Yes. <laughs> um, obviously, you, you probably don't want to machine machines too much as we learned. Yeah. It gets everywhere. It'll clog yeah. stuff up. But exactly. it worked for the time being, but now we're in, you know, got now a better setup. we have setup. a dedicated machine for that, which yeah. is good. Do we have a video on that? Probably. Put a clip Go in. Go watch it. <laughs> awesome. 
So yeah, new product, new product updates. updates. So the big new product we're working on right now is our integral knife. Um, not a lot of like visible progress this week, kind of frustratingly stuck on the little minuscule, tiny little things that yep. I have to pass before I can move to the next phase. Yep. Um, it's frustrating to me because I'm like, oh, I just want to do the big things. I just want it done. I just want to make a hard blade that's sharp and like wrap it all up and put a nice little bow on it and start selling hundreds of them. Um, but I'm not there yet. And even like this one uh, <laughs> fails. It does not lock up properly. So, what, so why does that fail? So ever since, Eric thinks knife number 500, somewhere around there. Um, we started doing two stop pins. One big stop pin, one small stop pin, one for the open position, one for the closed position. It works really well on this knife too. Um, currently I have too large of a stop pin in there. So the blade is basically not going far enough upwards, meaning the button, the lockup is not locking up enough. Gotcha. And so it's like just hooking right now. And you've only made a couple prototype pins so we don't have the range of yeah, sizes. I don't have want. the right size. So I'm just messing around right now. Um, eventually the knife needs to be able to pass this test of course. And, and stay locked they, up. They right? all get tested that way. Because this is just embarrassing, but obviously they, we would never send it yeah. out like that. And then also on the small side, on the closed side, it has to like feel good, it has to flip, has yeah. to not have any play, has to have just the right pop. Um, so I'm working on little fine tuning things like that, specifically with the buttons, um, still working on the challenge of making the buttons, made a bunch of them on the Willowman, ended up making 26, which took a long time, mm -hmm. came in on the weekend, made them. There were challenges with making that. The chips would wrap around the skinny part and then the vice would get in the way. And I, I basically had to pause every one, remove chips, make the next one. Yep. And I'm like, whatever, do what you got to do to get enough. And then we just sent them out a couple of days ago to the colsterizing process. Um, it was still up in the air if it's going to work, but apparently it takes stainless steel and makes the outer surface significantly harder Interesting. by injecting carbon. Yeah into the outer surface. And this is a proprietary uh, Proprietary coda, coating by Body, Body Coach, Coat. the company. Apparently they're one of the biggest heat tree yep. uh, vendors in the world. You've even heard of them yep. before. Um, and I think for this 17.4 material, it's like a really good application for our product to... Um, um, case hardened. No case hardened, that's the word I'm is looking that, for. Is yeah. that the word? It's, they don't use that word, but it's, 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 it's a way of... Okay, well we should dig hardened. into that in the future. It, yeah. once, once we get, if that's what we decide to use, we should talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. The guy, um, the sales guy sat down in a zoom call with me and showed me all these PowerPoint slides and I kind of screenshotted them and I don't know if I'm allowed to share them yet, but in the we'll future ask. maybe we will. Yeah. But, um, really cool process. And in about a week or two, we'll get them back and we'll see. So that'll allow the jaw, ge it'll hold that geometry on the buttons a little bit better. So yeah. Apparently way... it, it grows nothing in diameter, maybe okay. a micron or two. Mm -hmm. Your surface finish might get one RA worse, which is basically nothing. And the parts look the same. Yeah. So, so we'll we will these. see. Yeah, we'll, we'll test them extensively. And um, currently they're made of 17.4. They're about 45 Rockwell. Mm -hmm. And I kept a couple extra ones and I gave them to Sky to tumble and throw them in the tumbler. So Sky and Larry kind of figured it out and tumbled them. And they said seven hours later, they're still not tumbled. Because they're very light. They're no very, mass. there's no mass and they're small and the they're domed. So trying to have the tumbler. Yeah. Kind of, so we have some challenges there yeah, to figure out. Yeah, sure. some finishing challenge, which maybe we can achieve on the Swiss. Yeah, maybe. So next week, I next week, you and Jeff will be programming that on on the Swiss lathe. Yeah, we'll get the button programmed. He'll, I'll work with him in Fusion and get the tool pass dialed in. Yep. And uh, make a bunch because it can make them so much faster than the Willowman. Right on. So that leads us to our. Oh, Jeff is our new, our new machinist. Um, comes from a prototyping background. We'll introduce him in about a month. He's been here for about two months now. Um, doing great. He comes from a uh, prototyping background for in an industry we won't talk about, but it's big industry, big company. Um, has a lot of very valuable experience that we're yeah. eager to put to you know put to use. Um, he's super. So far, I'm happy. He seems like a great guy. So yep. um, that leads us to Pierre. Pierre, where'd you go? <laughs> Pierre. Where'd Pierre go? So um, we, have, we have Pierre in a lot of our videos. Um, he was our Swiss machinist. Now yes. he's a Swiss machinist. Basically. Uh, I joke, but his, his student visa expired, so Canada kicked him out. Yep. Um, and that's fine. He worked here for three years. It was awesome to have on the team. I mean, we, we got close with him, yes. right? Yeah, we worked with Pierre every day for three years. Um, you know, we're pretty close in here. We rely on each other. Um, so nobody silos off. We kind of, you know, bring yeah. you into the into tight. the group and you're part of yeah. us. And you guys part took of the him team. out. And yeah, so we brought him out as much as we could. You know, he didn't have many friends here. Um, so we brought him shooting, fishing. Stephen brought him ice fishing. They, they love to do that. Um, camping as much as we could, you know, and bring him in experience yeah. Canada. Um, so yeah, he's, was, he's back in Corsica now. Yep. And he's had some time to just like sit on the beach and enjoy the warm weather. 
and um, and he, he said he's uh, ready to work now again. So he asked if we could put in a good word at any of the nice companies that we know that are in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, because he's got skill, he's a machinist, he's got mechanical repair ability. And he's got a goal. He's got a goal. He he loves horology. I mean, we all love yeah, horology. Yeah, he wants to make a watch. He wants to make watches. He loves being in that space or just touching, you know, touching that world. Exactly. So it was kind of like a progression of his career. And he talked to us when, you know, before he left and a little bit when he was gone about like helping him find that that position. A good job, a great job for yeah. him, a career, So, right? so was, I, I, uh, I crafted a nice email, Angela helped me to, um, a specific company that in this shop you guys will have heard of before. I don't want to jinx it or anything, but um, put a nice email in and they got right back and they replied to Pierre too. And they said, you know, interview depending, uh, we could use somebody like that. Perfect. Absolutely. Yep. So he's interviewing, I believe, Monday. Yeah. Like pretty fast. A couple of days. In a couple days. Uh, super fast. Yeah. Right? So we were sad to leave him or yeah. lose him. Pierre, we love you. Um, we yeah. miss you. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, stay in touch. And yeah. I, I, I hope you have a very bright future. Any way I can help with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we'll see Pierre again in the future yeah. for some special projects. Yeah, either, either uh, you know, personally or professionally for some reason. For some so, reason. So we'll see. Um, very excited about that. And um, what else did I want to say? Uh, something else about Pierre. I don't know. Great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, his video. We're going to post some. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's post his interview. <laughs> the full circle thing. So apparently Pierre told me yeah. many years ago, he used to watch our videos in Corsica, not being a machinist yeah. that led him to want to be a machinist. And he said there weren't many machining programs in France. So he moved to Canada with his girlfriend. They both went to school in Quebec. He went to machining school in Quebec. And then she went to, I forget something. Teaching, teaching language or yeah. something, right? So they went to Canada and then an interview came up uh, at our job. So he interviewed with us. And he had his Kennedy toolbox in the background and, you know, he was all French and hilarious and nice and yeah. smart and stuff. And we're like, that's the guy. Yeah, we'll post a video, Pierre. We're going to post the video. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> and that was three years ago. And then he worked here for three wonderful years. Yeah. And then he couldn't anymore. Um, so anything we can do to help, you know, build his future is, is awesome. And actually finding a replacement was very difficult. Yeah. Because he had, you know, a surprising amount of skill and technical knowledge that yeah. we utilize like crazy. Especially the machines we utilize, you know, if you if you know machining Swiss lathes aren't common. Yeah, they're very, weird. They're very few people yeah. understand them and can work with them. And, you know, maybe fewer people are around. Exactly. So and even like our new guy, Jeff, had never worked with one, but no. he picked it up real fast. Yep. He, he, we could tell in the interviews he had the mechanical ability to do it and he's proving himself. So yep. it's all working out. Awesome. So, yeah. So, yeah. So that um, our future goals for this year is um, you know, we want to communicate more with our, our customers. We want to be part of, you know, share more with the community. Yeah. Last year, um, we had kind of like a low key meet here. Um, I, I don't know if we posted much about that, but we had an open house um, that was kind of like an invite only for Locals some only, of the local yeah. makers yeah. or the, you know, of, of our local community. Um, and it, it went great. It was it our great. first time doing it. We had what, maybe 40 people show yeah, up? Yeah, about 40 like people. Nothing um, too big, nothing too small. It was nice just have everybody kick around, yeah, eat some pizza. It'd be good to do something like that this year. Maybe we'll talk about it over the course of the year. Yeah, maybe open it, it up fun. to, you know, I see some Americans up here, if, you yeah. know, the border behaves. Um, yeah, it'd be good to have more of these, you know, these meets and stuff. We're going to be at Blade, so we'll be with you guys there. Yeah, there'll be um, lots of hanging out there. Yeah, and more team building for us. Like, you know, we've been really pushing hard and getting the shop together is like a, you know, it's a, a blood, sweat and tears kind of effort some days. And, you know, it's easy to go home and just relax, but sometimes we got to do stuff together. So exactly. last year we started trying to do more. Yeah. Um, you know, when I started, me and Eric used to go downhilling uh, quite often and uh, not often, often, but enough. And, um, you know, as we get busier and busier, it kind of, you know, those things fall to the wayside. But last year we tried to bring that together. Yeah, we, did, we did quite a few things. Yeah, it's, it's especially fun when it's uh, employee led. Like one of the other guys is like, hey, we're going bowling. Yeah, I'm just making this up right now, but we're going bowling. Whoever's coming comes. So we've gone bowling twice. It was super fun. Um, the, other night, the other night we went rock climbing, indoor yeah. rock climbing. Um, my kids came. It was great. We had like nine of us. Yeah. All We all happened to wear the same Grimswo t-shirt. Really? So it was like this, this team? crew. Yeah, this team funny. thing. And speaking of team building, you know, you've worked really hard to build the team and the camaraderie and the trust in each other. Yeah. And it's starting to really show what I saw with rock climbing. You weren't there. You didn't see it. So Gabe, one of our finishing guys, was up on this thing. It was like um, a pretty, pretty challenging thing. And he had his feet up on this thing and his feet were right here. And he was, end of the day, he was like gas. Yeah. But he was so, he is a competitive guy. He You're was so excited. determined to yeah. get it. And he's like, my hands are sweating. So in comes Grayson with his chalk bag and he runs right up and he holds the chalk bag up 
and Gabe's like one hand, other hand, and then he mailed it, nailed it, and then nice. he jumped off. And it was like, I just watched that and I was like, that's team building. Team building. Like, yeah. that, those guys trust each other and, yeah. and they're there for each other. It's really cool to see that. Yeah, and it's a team that you know we want to foster and everybody yeah. we bring in is part of our culture and you know, yeah, yeah. There, there's that shared camaraderie and love and, and passion for making things. We're not here because we, we want a paycheck. We're here because we love to do this. You know, it's it's a it's a work of passion. It yep. really is, and we want everybody to, to share that and to feel that. We want you guys to see that, and you know, it's yeah the best we can do. I love it. Yeah, we love uh, we get feedback from customers. We get um, absolutely letters. We got we love you know when you guys send us stuff. We you know we read every letter. All the stickers go up on the wall or somewhere in our shop. I think we'll show some footage of this yeah. if you guys want to see it. Um, you know, you, it's really nice to see that feedback. I know you guys work really hard, makers are there, um, and sometimes makers will send us cool yeah. stuff, a prototype or something like that. We really appreciate it. Sometimes we try to give critical feedback to help grow. Yeah. Um, so speaking of which, I haven't even opened this yet, but my good friend uh, Chris Bathgate is a mechanical sculptor, machinist. I don't yeah, even know what sculptor, call it, but he's an awesome guy. He's an awesome. He's like I've been following him for years. I bought his two previous books, and he just sent me as a pre-production prototype copy, um, his new one, because he DM'd me and he asked, and he's like, hey, you're a big inspiration of mine. And I'm like, I'm a big, no, you're the inspiration. Like, I've been following you for longer than you've been following me. Like, anyway, it was really cool. So um, let's get some close-ups of this, but real quick, I'll just open it. Um, yeah, Chris is an amazing guy, and he does these insane sculptures out of machined parts. And um, yoink, let's get some close-ups of this because inspiring through expert knowledge, like some of this stuff yeah. is just, it's so inspiring. Yeah, Like beautiful. from a creativity side. And he shows like how he does it in his yeah. garage and um, it's wild, it's wild. And he doesn't have the biggest fanciest equipment. He's got like a tarmac lathe and a manual mill, like, pretty basic stuff but what he's able to do with it yeah it's beautiful and, and he, he he uses it as an opportunity to learn all these new techniques and finishing and uh anodizing himself yep. and i don't know i don't know how his brain works yeah, these are beautiful but for him to be able to pull this off is i can't Art. do this that, that's <laughs> but that's i want amazing. to be able to yeah. right like wow and these are the kind of things they go up in the smithsonian museum for an art exhibit like he is an artist yes but a machinist as well yep. that's his medium Exactly. No, it's not paint, it's metal. Yep. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I really respect you, Chris. Um, thank you so much for the yeah. book. There's story in here. There's every, it's, this means a lot. It really yeah. means a lot. And every letter we get, we put up, I think we should show that, all the cards, all the letters, you know, yeah. anything from you, from you guys and from our fans is like really appreciated. Um, yeah, we love it. It inspires us and, uh, yep. you know, that's why we do it. Yep. And I think I'll, I'll wrap up on one thing. So one of the cool things about our saga, I mean, you started in 2018. Yep. And that's pretty much right around the time when- Yeah, it was about a month in or two months in, you came in with an idea. Yeah, with, so like you've been around for the entire saga. You've actually run most of it. What I find the coolest about the saga is when we as a company or friends are able to gift it to very specific people. Um, you know, we make a lot of scrap parts every now and then. Mm -hmm. And it's we're able to put together friends and family pens. Yes and give them to literally friends and family yep. that mean something to us. Um, so I gave one to my aunt, my dad's sister in Norway, who's having a tough time right now. Um, and she's been following us. She's not into it, but she's into us. And she, you know, I, I haven't seen her in probably 25 years, but we keep in touch a little bit. Anyway, so Angelo put together a really nice pen. I think it was purple and some other uh, stuff. It's all silver with a nice fuchsia slider. And it's just beautiful. And we send her a hoodie and some other stuff. And she just got it the other day. And she's like, oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting this. Thank you so much. In Norwegian, obviously. And um, she said, my dog's name was Saga. And he just passed away recently. So you have no idea how much this means to me. I didn't know this. And that's like, you know, it's wild. Yeah. Sometimes, Sometimes you don't know what connection you're about to have with somebody. Yeah. So... Yeah, I love being able to do that with the pen. Like the knife, it's a lot of work, a lot of investment, a lot of money. The pen is a little bit less dollars for us to um, still, hand out. So still quite a bit of work, yeah. But you know what I mean? Yes, yep. Like before we had the pen, we're like, we can't just go giving around knives because it's too much work. It's yep. too much money. But the pen, I don't know. It's been really fun to be able to do that. So will we bring some to Blade? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> we're going to bring some we'll fun play some stuff games. to Blade. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I think we're uh, doing really yeah, good for time here. Yeah, I think it's been a good chat. Um, there's lots more to talk about. We have a few other topics we'll talk about. So much week. to talk about. Yeah, sitting down here and like we, we sit down an hour before this, um, same with last week and the amount of topics. It's like, where do you stop? Because we haven't been doing this. Like we've been head down, you know, especially the guys in the shop have been head down, grinding away, trying to, you know, improve processes, improve their skills, yep. build the staff, build the team while maintaining that culture of excellence and not letting it dilute. Um, that's, you know, a lot of effort and exactly. being able to like share this. Yeah, is... to communicate it properly. Like a picture or a post is, is not enough. Yeah. And even this isn't enough, but it's it's more. So yeah, let's quickly uh, go over oh, yeah, customer right. feedback. Let's end on this. So um, we asked you guys questions last week. We want to feedback on that. Um, so we, we read this. And um, so for mini sagas, it seems like a lot of people want everything. Yeah. <laughs> they want a kit to buy the, the pen and the tube, like a, a full size pen and a mini pen tube as okay. a kit. We'll probably offer that to start. And then they want to be able to buy a tube itself. Like an upgrade kit? Yep, just like just the tube and the ink, uh, maybe a spring. Yep. And then we'll see how we package that and send that out. And then a, a set where we can do a mini and a, a minimus and a, and a saga. Yeah. Um, other people obviously asking about G2 refills, the size. Yes, this is something that will happen over time. It's something we've talked about, you know, a lot. There's, there's challenges in doing that. There's challenges with yeah. the, um, the way the tip is, the way these, um, these tips sit, the spring and seat, et cetera. We have to kind of engineer that correctly. Yeah. Um, there, but there are, you know, there are some things out there that we want to try. Um, I know Mont Blanc inserts are something people like. Yeah, somebody was asking about Energel inserts too. Yeah, so he that's his favorite. We'd also like to know, like, your guys' experiences with inserts that currently fit in here. What would you like to see us offer as a, you know, just an add-on or additional? Yeah. Um, yep. Because we've tried a few. We've tried the um, the space pen, the Fisher space pen. We've tried these. Yep. Um, you know, give us that feedback on that of what you guys would like to see. Um, Fully blacked out DLC mini drops. Yeah, why that'd not? be sick. Yeah, that'll happen. Uh, Damascus return. Yes, we're uh, machining Damascus. So there's Damascus at the front shop. There's Damascus in here. Um, and Saga parts. Hey, what's that? <laughs> so that's that's serial number sixty. We machined this in 2018. What are we even on now? Seven thousand and change. Yeah. So this yeah, we're over seven thousand right now. This has been sitting in that drawer because it's a it's an older style of gamma steel that's um, non magnetic, okay. so it doesn't harden and it doesn't actually etch very deep. So okay. we'll take some pictures of this, um, but we definitely want to get I definitely want to get a Damascus clip on here. It'll yeah. look amazing in the future. We have um, we have done some other exotic materials, which you guys will probably see a blade um, on yeah. some specific numbers coming up. So so yes. 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 You guys so will see that clip. I seem to remember that clip spent about two years. Two years. Years in the <laughs> corn cob polishing tumbler. Just to see if it would polish. Like, this was an experiment for us. Yeah. If you want to see, like, how does this work? Does it look good? How is the machine? Uh, we knew that the 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 gray, the type of steel wouldn't be what we needed, but we wanted to try it. Try it. So we will we'll definitely get some out there. It is quite time consuming because these aren't blocks you can just take and put in there. They have to be prepped. You have to make sure it's aligned properly. Then the mach we're going to machine them hard. So there'll be an yeah, expense between, associated yeah, yeah. with that. They'll definitely go for quite a premium, but we're going to do it. They look um, sick. They do look amazing. So expect more damage steel. Expect Damascus. Yeah. Expect some more, you know, some fun materials. Expect some steels that we might use once or twice, yeah. which leads us into blade steel comments. Um, yes, we will try, you know, we're, we're going to try some new things. As we talked about earlier, these, we're not going to just going to, throw in any steel, send the recipe and assume it's good. And then some guy gets a knife and we did something wrong. Um, we're going to you know, strategically bring in steels. We could see ourselves doing smaller batches. That'd uh, be fun. You know, I have, you know, there's a certain steel I have at home that I'll probably, uh, you know, donate to donate the cause, to, the like, cause yeah. to put in the integral just to try something new. I've, I have some experience with it. Um, so yeah. we'll, we'll validate that heat treat, but we want to make sure that everything leaving this, this business is to the best that we possibly can. Yeah. Um, yeah, we read some steel comments. There's going to be some stuff we're going to use. Um, the hardness, um, we use, like we talked about earlier, we use the, the recommended specification per that manufacturer, maybe a little bit on the higher side, but we got to be careful and watching, watch that Sharpie drop off on impact toughness. It matters. It yeah. matters crucially. And if you're losing all that impact toughness, you should be looking at another steel if you need that hardness. So there's certain steels that we can kind of utilize and play with in the future. And it's as a consumer maybe you're like a harder is the best you know i just 
yeah. I want to go 64 because you can kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and then but. look at that Sharpie, uh, Sharpie impact drop off. It's significant. There's a there's ideal ranges for steels, and yeah. we're gonna we're gonna use the proper material science, material engineering method, and do it right. Um, you can watch Laren Thomas's videos and what he recommends or his, his posts, yep. um, and you'll see why. You can read, the, look at those graphs and those charts. Very educated choice on there, so we're gonna stick with it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be experimenting with Magna Cut for a little while. Nothing else on the immediate horizon. Yep. But uh, we plan, have some plan. fun steals yeah, that yeah. will, you guys will see some cool stuff in the future, some very cool things. And one guy asked about the ability to swap out a blade. Um, you know, I don't think we're ever going to sell no. a replacement blade. That's another steel, and you guys just put it in. No. We're too particular with the fit-up of the knife. Our finishing guys put a lot of effort into choosing the right of the dual stop pins. Um, every blade does have ever so slight variations, as good as we try to be on manufacturing. Um, I just, I don't like the idea of just swapping out a blade. I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's not like mechanically. Yeah, like it's it's is I it the desire, is it doable? But yeah. Yes, but. Is that something we really want to dive into and ensure did you have the right pins and et cetera? Is the lockup going to hold? Yeah. Like all no, this, we'll move yeah. forward with, um, we'll try new steels. We'll, you know, we'll use RWL, we'll use Damo, uh, yeah, yeah. Damo Steel, Magna Cut. As the product is built, that's one thing, and then our guys can tune the knife properly. Yes. But for a customer to take one knife and take another knife and swap the blades, it might work fine, but it's not something I want to no, recommend or, a, or sell a, for. Yeah, there's a guarantee that this, this brand is put yeah, forward. Yeah. With all the effort we can, the amount of you know feel and, and effort that goes into tuning these is, is quite great. Um, so we need to maintain that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's people like all sorts of steels. S390. Somebody was commenting. Um, I'm a fan of K390. I think Bowler makes an amazing, amazing product. Yeah. Um, some of the steels we will not use just because we don't feel that they're, you know, mechanical properties are ideal for the product. Yeah. But there Even will if they're be hype and cool and yeah. There's some, you know, you just look at those numbers. Um, cool. So yeah, so expect some fresh new things over the year, um, some more of you know the same excellence and get love better. It. Love it, love it. Awesome. So we tried to make this a shorter episode, but I think we're coming up close to an hour now. In my head, these were five minute videos. <laughs> like this is what we're gonna do. No, it's fun. It's fun to talk about this. Um, it's fun to dive deep. It's fun to have you on, and um, it's good. I hope you guys find value in this. Let us know. We'll keep yeah. doing it. Otherwise, if it sucks, I mean, don't tell me if it sucks. Just. <laughs> It's good. Yeah. It's fun. Awesome. Um, yeah. See you guys next week. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye.